assume that I'm a skeptic. Okay. Not only a skeptic, but a Tea Party Republican mm -hmm. who uh, goes to church every Sunday mm -hmm. where my beloved pastor tells me that, reassures me that God created the earth 6,000 years ago and that if God wants to end the earth, God will on God's terms, that this is out of our control. If, I, if you were sitting across from a good, disciplined believer like that, what argument would you make to me? Well, the first thing I would do is I would listen. I would really listen because I'd want to know really what are the depths of not just their concerns about this issue, but what are their aspirations? What do they want for their children? What do they want for their grandchildren? What kind of community do they want to live in? What are the values that really animate uh, and, and motivate them? Um, and I would try to find some way to then meet them where they are first. So let's just take the, the religious side. There are wonderful activities going on by all of the world's major religions right now, including the evangelical churches, yeah. to say this is a moral and religious issue. Okay? From our worldview, from our standpoint, um, this is crucial, both because we were commanded by God in Genesis to till and tend the garden, to care for his creation, which when he created, he kept telling us, it is good. Okay? It is our responsibility, they would say, to take care of his creation, um, and that the kinds of things that we are currently doing to the planet are essentially violating that, that promise. Um, but moreover, um, we're also seeing the theme of social justice that we've been commanded, uh, they would say, to take care of the least of these, um, the poor, the sick, the powerless, both in our own country and around the world. And many churches, in fact, have invested enormous resources, I mean, sending their young people abroad to do great works to try to help people who desperately need that help. Their argument would be, how can we, in good conscience, ignore a problem that's just going to push millions of more people around the world into those exact same kinds of circumstances we're trying to help them with. Okay? So all I'm saying is that the faith community itself is not monolithic. It isn't homogenous and it too is trying, currently, struggling to make sense of this new issue and what is the role of religious faith in answering it. So I'm Speaker of the House John Boehner and I ask you to come see me and I say, I want to do what you're suggesting Give me the sound bites that a real conservative can use. I think there are a couple things. One is they need to look at the threat. Okay, so as an example, could we think in a different way about climate change as a threat to our freedoms? Okay, climate change itself is a threat to our freedoms. To our freedoms? Sure. If you're a f if you're a rancher or a farmer in uh, the Great Plains today. Your freedom is enormously constrained by the fact that you're in the midst of a two-year severe drought. Okay? You don't get to choose what you're going to plant. You don't get to choose what cows you're going to slaughter. In fact, we've just seen in Texas in the past year, two million head of cow cows or cattle are no longer in Texas. They had to move them out because they couldn't provide the food and forage and water for them because of that drought. That's not freedom. Okay? You are literally not able to do the thing that you were raised and that you believe in as part of your culture because the climate has changed. You got me on that one. What's another one? Another side, though, is the opportunity side. Um, first of all, political opportunity, which is perhaps the language that most touches them directly, and that is that they've now lost two national elections. Okay? And that hurts. I'm sure it hurts. Um, they need to find a new way back to the middle of this country. Okay? Now, there's an active debate happening within the Republican Party right now between may, perhaps our problem is that we weren't pure enough. Okay? I mean, we hear those voices on the right who are saying, you know, Mitt Romney was really just a liberal in disguise, that we didn't make a stark enough choice, uh, and that what we need is purification. We need to become uh, true, you know, even, even take this, this party farther to the right, versus those that are uh, in the middle that are saying there is no... Uh, pathway to political success unless you can reach this new America that is quickly emerging. Hispanics, uh, minorities, young people, women who voted in record numbers not just in 2008 but in 2012. And if we ever want to be able to succeed at the national level again, we have to find a way to appeal back to these new voters who are not uh, responding to these far 
uh, these far-right messages. Okay? So there's enormous political opportunity. We'll see where the Republican Party decides to, to move. And that brings me to, a, a, in fact, former Republican Congressman Sherwin Bollard has said that the best way to, for this to happen is if a Republican comes up with a proposed solution. If Obama does it, it won't happen. But if some Republicans start the conversation and make the first proposal, that's the only way we're going to have not only the conversation you're calling for, but action on change. And I totally agree with that. So why can't we get the Republican Party to see what you have been talking about? I think basically the Republican Party has reached the conclusion themselves that they are appealing to the, the dismissive wing of their own base. I mean, it's actually quite remarkable when you look back over the history of this. I mean, remember, the figure in the U.S. Senate who repeatedly put forward the nation's best and most sophisticated answer to the climate challenge for many years was Senator John McCain. The nominee of the Republican Party was the premier architect of responding to climate change. How far things have changed in the past four years, where we ended up in the primaries of the Republican primaries of 2012, and we found that all of them, with the one exception of John Huntsman, um, were calling into question the basic reality of the problem itself. Uh, we're basically saying, in some cases, saying that it was a hoax. Okay? This is a remarkable turn for the party itself. And, you know, and what we're seeing, of course, right now is that in the aftermath of the loss of 2012, uh, Republicans are beginning to look inward and they're trying to say, where have we gone wrong? Where are our new opportunities to engage the public? Immigration is one of those issues that they're beginning to, to say, maybe it's time to change our position. Climate change could be another of those because it's one of the ways that they can appeal back to the middle. Uh, our own work, we found that independents are much more like Democrats on their beliefs about climate change than they are Republicans. So if Republicans want a way back, this is one of the ways that they could do it. And there's actually a historical precedent. We used to have a huge acid rain problem in this country. We created essentially a cap and trade system where we capped the amount of, of sulfur dioxide being emitted from these smokestacks, brought that cap down over years, and allowed companies to sell their emission rights between each other. So a company that was really good at reducing their emissions could sell that remaining block to another company that needed more time. It was one of the most successful programs in American history. It was put, it was put on the table and passed by a Republican president, uh, the first George Bush, uh, Bush Sr. Uh, and it solved the problem, or it largely solved the problem, at a cost far below what even the best estimates at the time were. We know that these kind of policies can work. It was a Republican idea. And so the irony of it is, is that the Republican Party has walked away from even one of their best ideas, one of their best proven ideas that really worked. So the question is, how can we bring Republicans back to the table and say, that's ours. We own that. This is our contribution to solving the problem. And in fact, we think our principles and our solutions are better than yours.